Hi, I'm Ken Ellis from Ellis Machine Shop. You all know me, I'm your engine guy. Today we're going to talk about horsepower. Uh, more specifically, we're going to talk about uh, the relationship of how different components match together so that you can uh, release the full potential that that your particular engine should have for your, for your uh, given application, whether it's a street ride or whether it's a race car. The biggest issues that I see, uh, especially from the customers who bring me their parts in, is that they bring me in a lot of components that just don't match. A lot of components that work together, but they really don't match. And what I mean by that is, is that uh, they don't see the full horsepower potential because, uh, because of uh, the camshaft maybe doesn't work with the intake or we don't have enough compression to utilize the size of the cylinder heads. Uh, or what they do is they get an engine together that's very temperamental and it's hard to tune. It has detonation problems, and if you live in a place like we live here in Maryland, you've probably heard me say this before, our weather pattern changes every 15 minutes. Um, it can wake up in the morning, it can be freezing cold. Uh, by noon, we can have, uh, it, it can be a, a summer day. Um, it, it, it bounces all over the place, and your engine has got to be, has got to be finely tuned, not just adjustment-wise, but components-wise. They have to work together in order for that engine to be a dependable, enjoyable motor releasing its full horsepower potential. Um, this video this video was going to come out in a few weeks. I, I decided to I decided to bring it forward because I had a conversation with a, 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 a guy on the internet named Les and uh, he made it, he asked me after my last video what camshaft do we pick to make 450 to 500 horsepower in his 351 Windsor and when I tried to tell him we don't really pick a camshaft to make horsepower, there's a lot more to it than that. It kind of spurred a little bit of a debate and he basically told me he does things different than me. Well, that's fine. And um, and I don't know how he does things, so I'm not criticizing him because I don't, I don't know how he goes about things. But he was asking me for advice. And so I thought this would be a really, really good video to bring up now. Uh, we have, we have uh, a lot of people who will come in the door and they will ask me for the, you know, a, a customer comes in uh, and says, I have such and such a vehicle and it's a drag race car and I want it to run 990s. Okay, I have to be able to build it to run 990s. And in order to do that, I have to be able to not only calculate how much horsepower uh, I'm going to make, I have to be, I have to know enough about that vehicle that I can put the two together and tell that gentleman that when I get this done, that this vehicle is going to do what he's paying me to do. Um, if the car runs 960, uh, you know, even faster runs 960, you know, I'm a hero. It's you know, that's that's wonderful. If the car runs 1030s, the engine's a bust, <laughs> and I'm a scrub. Um, you know, I have to. I'm a I'm a professional. I, it has to do what I say it's going to do. So I had to learn how to calculate horsepower. And through some very simple tools, along with experience, because this, every, what I'm getting ready to tell you here now, uh, most of it, I'm going to be able to tell you, and you're going to be able to calculate things yourself. But some of it is a little bit of common sense, and common sense comes with experience. And uh, um, you know, especially you guys got a few, a few gray hair, uh, hairs in your beard. Um, this stuff doesn't all happen overnight. But you, what I'm going to explain to you. If you have never heard this before, I promise you, if you stick through to the end, this is going to make you a better engine builder. I'm going to teach you how I, how I engineer from start to finish, how much horsepower that uh, uh, that an engine will make, how much how much can I expect any given combination to put out. The problem is, is that most people come in with unreal expectations. Uh, they think we have some kind of like magical engine kit or something where. You know, this is the 400 horsepower kit. This is a 600. You know, you got so many guys nowadays that come in here because they've watched so many shows, uh, so many magazines, all these people on the internet that are making you know outrageous claims um, that you know 900 streetable horsepower. And guys, I'm not saying you don't have 900 horsepower on the street, but we're talking about once again American muscle cars, basically naturally aspirated engines, and. Uh, not, we're not talking about we're not talking about power adders, no superchargers, nitrous, uh, anything like that, turbos. We're talking about making horsepower off the engine, fuel injected, carbureted, and uh, and it can only make but so much. And 
we're talking about real street rides. Although we're going to cover, we're going to cover, like I said, race cars too. But there's a lot of inf there's only a few questions that I really need to have answered before I can figure out how much horsepower your engine's going to make, and that's what I'm going to teach here today. Some of you guys are driving race cars on the street, and you call them street cars. Well, that, that's fine, you know. But if I put if I put blinker lights and uh, and tags on a Sherman tank and drive it down the middle of Main Street, it's still a Sherman tank. So we're, we're, I'm really going to talk to you more about uh, excuse me more about um, street ride motors is really is really going to be the the center of our attention. But the information I'm giving you is applicable towards high-end race engines too. Okay, before I before I get into that, I want to just to just to make my point. I want to tell you a quick story. Two guys come in my shop. Uh, two young two young fellas, and uh, the guy one one guy has an engine he wants to get rebuilt, and his buddy's with him. 350 Chevy comes in the door, talks to me. I give him my philosophy on how I go about doing things and why I do what I do, what type of parts I use, why I use them, what I think he needs, what I don't think he needs. He sold, he said, he you know, drops the deposit off, drops his engine, I build his engine. He gets it back, uh, I supplied everything, he gets it back and uh, puts it in the car and a little while later, him and his buddy stop back up, um, tell me, you know, which happens all the time, guys all the time stop back in, a lot of guys pull up and show me their cars and things like that, which I greatly appreciate. Because uh, I hand a lot of really nice work out the door, and I never get to see it again. So, uh, so he stopped up to see me, told me how happy he was with it. And his other buddy, uh, the friend, he says, "I want you to build my 352." I said, "Okay." So a little bit of time goes by, and he calls me up, tells me he's going to come on up and see me. I said, "Great," and uh, wants to know if he can drop his engine off. Sure. So he he comes into my shop, and when he comes into my shop, he walks up to my counter. And he starts unloading all these boxes of parts that he has. He's done got all the major components. So once he loads it up there, and of course I'm rolling my eyes in my head thinking, here we go again. Because a lot of times people buy stuff that just makes life miserable for us. They're just parts that just don't work. But uh, everything that he had was going to work together, but wasn't, wasn't a good coordination of parts. So I said to him, and this is, this is a true story, I'm not making this up. Why did you pick that camshaft? Well, my one buddy had that and it worked really good. Okay. Why did you pick that intake? Well, my other buddy bought that intake and it worked very good. So, okay. And uh, so the, the whole thing was basically like that. He had a, a, a mixed match of items and I wanted to send some of them back, but he's been collecting them like two years. He says, I can't send these back. And, and you know, in all honesty, he probably enjoyed, you know, we all do, we all enjoy sitting down and trying to do the math and figure things out and, and research. And, and we like to put our own parts together. That's how I got in this business. But I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't want one of my engines that I built when I was 20 or 22 years old in one of my cars. I knew so much more today than I did back then. Um, back then, I built a lot of really fast street rides, obnoxious, hard to tune, pain in the neck type engines that most guys wouldn't want. Uh, I wouldn't want one today. But, but you know, I understand that you just want to go ahead and try to figure out your own combinations because that's all part of the fun. And so that's what this video is here today is about. And to be honest with you, I've, ne I, I have never seen anybody who's going to tell you what I'm telling you here today. Um, most people keep this stuff to themselves. Uh, some people probably don't do everything exactly the way I do it, but this, this is very simple. Uh, so anyhow, back to my story. These fellas, uh, he brings in all his parts, all these mixed match parts. I get the engine done. Um, he's gone for a while. He comes back and he tells me, he tells me, there's something wrong with this engine. My engine literally sounds so much better than my buddy, than the first buddy's engine. He says, but his car runs almost a full two seconds faster than mine on a quarter mile. And for you guys who don't know much about drag racing, that's huge. That's a big, big difference. Um, and I told him, I didn't build your engine. I assembled your engine. You were the, you were the main engineer here. You were the general contractor. You were the one who put the whole project together. You just hired me as a laborer. I said, now I'm responsible for all the clearances being right. And you know, nothing, nothing falling apart, coming loose or, uh, you know, burning oil. I, I made sure that everything was working correctly, but ultimately it was a combination that I would have never run. I'd have never picked those parts out and it didn't run like one of my motors. And the reason I tell you that is that 
I understand that you guys want to pick out all your own parts. It's all part of the fun. And if you take a stock engine, and I don't care what manufacturer it is, and you throw, you make a little more compression in it, and you throw a, a big pair of heads on it, and you throw a nice lumpy cam and a good ignition carburetor, it's going to go a lot faster than it did before. And you probably are going to be patting yourself on the back, and maybe your buddies think you're a guru. It ain't going to run like one of mine. It's not going to run like one of your engine builders. I mean, seriously, guys, you can't possibly think that you're going to uh, come up with the same combination that I would after all the years I've been doing this. Um, if you've built 100 engines in your life, you're a rookie. You're an absolute rookie. Even if every one of them worked out right, you're a rookie with a good start, but you're a rookie. Um, I've been doing this a long time. So have probably so has your engine builder. So uh, I'm not telling you not to pick your parts out. I'm here to help you get some information so that you pick out better parts. But you really can't expect your project. If you're trying to get something that's as, that's as finely tuned as it can possibly be, you can't, expect, you can't expect just to read a little bit and come back and have the same knowledge that a professional engine builder has. So I'm going to get into the specifics of how I do things. But before we go there, I tell you this one last thing. I can't help all you guys with your combinations. Please don't call me up and say, what camshaft, what carburetor was, I can't build all of your combinations for you. And by the way, uh, that is a paid service that I have here. You can pay me to design an engine if you want to buy all your parts yourself. You can pay for the time that it takes for us to talk over the telephone, to discuss all the specifics, and to lay out a game plan and come up with specific parts and things that you need to do even if you're you know far away and you got somebody else who did the machine work for you but you ought to be talking to the guy who did the machine work i mean i talk I, your 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 local machine shop if he's selling you your parts there's a lot better chance he's going to stay in business so support your local business but if you'd like me to help i can do that okay so here's here's the first thing <clears throat> this is this is the whole key for how I go about designing an engine. Engines are going to make only so much horsepower per cubic inch. That's the first thing that I, that I uh, establish. Um, and the way I establish that is I ask questions about your particular vehicle. I find out whether it's going to be a real street car, whether it's going to be a race car, or is it going to be like a, like I said, a race car on the street, your real high end horsepower. And what I am finding out is I'm trying to figure out what compression ratio I'm going to set because the compression ratio I'm going to choose is going to revolve around your ability to tune the engine. Uh, I have some guys that are magnificent. I have, and, and, and those guys, we might, if it's a street ride motor, we might build something 11 to 1. Uh, you, can, you can get 11 to 1 carbureted engine to run, run on pump gas if, if you're really good at it. And you're also going to have to retune it often because, as I said, weather patterns change and then it's retuning is necessary. A lot of guys don't want to deal with all that. Uh, so they, they opt to go down lower. I personally opt to go down lower. I can do it. I don't want it. I don't want a temperamental engine. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, you got guys that are all thumbs that, uh, that don't know how to use a timing light without giving themselves a flash in their eyes. Uh, they, they don't know how, they, they just don't know how to tune. Those guys, I might build an engine down nine to one, nine and a half. But generally speaking, and, and for the sake of argument here, just we're going to pretend we're going to pretend at this point, and we're going to move forward. We're going to say that that we've done talked about your vehicle, and and we've decided that we're going to run uh, that we're going to run a uh, compression ratio of about ten to one. Now, this is some very simple math. Uh, your engine is only going to be make but so much horsepower per cubic inch. Now, I'm going to make a 10 to 1 motor will work will run perfectly fine on the street if it's a 283 engine or if it's a thousand cubic inch motor. I'm still going to make it 10 to 1, and I'm still going to use the same formula to move forward from here. Now, what we're going to do is uh, knowing that it's going to be 10 to 1 we can figure out about how much horsepower this engine is already going to make. And we can figure that out without even knowing what camshaft or cylinder head. Because we know, we know the cylinder head combustion chamber and the piston combination, we're going to make 10 to 1. And if you're taking an engine that's 400 horsepower, I mean 400 cubic inch, uh, if, if we're releasing 
one horsepower per cubic inch, this thing's going to make 400 horsepower. And then when you know when you know how much horsepower it's making, then you can figure out how much air has to flow in order to support 400 horsepower. It really is just that simple. Now, a lot of you guys probably have different formulas that you might use, and if you do, that's fine. But do me a favor, I don't need comments with people telling me I'm wrong or they do things different. And the reason I say that is not because it's not because I'm full of myself, it's because what I've been doing works deadly accurate. And uh, I've been building engines that do exactly what, they're, what I say they're going to do for 20, for, you know, I've been doing this formula for at least 25 years, been building much longer than that. So what I do works exactly accurate, and, and there is going to be so much controversy here that a lot of people are just going to blow, try to blow me up, and I, honestly, guys, I, I just don't. This will be one of the few videos that I'm probably not going to answer back all of your comments. Probably not a lot of them. And I can't help all you guys figure out which camps you have to go in next. It's just, it, there's too many of you and only one of me. I can't go there. Okay, so if you have a 400 cubic inch engine and moderate compression, um, the potential of creating one horsepower per cubic inch is very easy. Um, this is what I want to teach you. I want to teach you the horsepower per cubic inch. If you are to build an engine that's making the same 400 horsepower, the compression's a little higher in it, it'll have the ability to release more, more power, maybe one and a quarter horsepower per cubic inch. Uh, that would be a 500 horsepower motor. One and a half would be six. A 600 horsepower motor, two horsepower per cubic inch would be an 800 horsepower engine. And uh, that's, that also is completely and totally doable. But the compression ratio is going to be much higher. You know, from, from the 400 horsepower model that we might, we might be at a nine and a half to one range, all the way up to a, an engine that is going to make the same 400 cubic inch motor that's going to make 800 horsepower, that engine is probably going to be a 13 and a half, 14 to one motor, 14 and a half. So, um, that's one of the things that we're going to key in on here. I, I need to find out. I need to find out the tune, your tuning ability, and then that'll pick our compression ratio. So this is this is the data that I have so far. If you're my customer, I know that you have a 400 cubic inch motor, and I've done talk to you, and through our conversation, I've determined that uh, we're going to build you about a 10 to one motor. You 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 can tune on it a little. You're pretty good. Um, you don't want something that's temperamental. So we're going to go 10 to one. And a 10 to one motor, we're probably gonna make about, a, about one and a quarter horsepower per cubic inch. Now, that varies depending upon different makes and models, but not a lot. So it's not, it's not a point for argument. This is just a, a point of demonstration. It's gonna make, make, we're gonna say one and a quarter horsepower per cubic inch. So we're gonna build a street engine. We're gonna build a say, we'll say it's a 400 Chevy and we're gonna make 500 cubic inch. I'm sorry, 500 horsepower. And that 500 horsepower, um, it's very easy to figure out how much air do we have to flow in order to make 500 horsepower. So if you have a 500 horsepower engine and it's an eight cylinder engine, you divide 500 by eight and you come up with 62, 50, six and a, 62 and a half horsepower per cubic inch. And we know the formula that I use and a lot of guys use and some, some's a little different from one person to the next. So but I use this and it's very accurate. I use four CFM of intake flow per horsepower. So if I have a uh, engine that I have to make 62 and a half horsepower per cubic inch, that means I have to have a cylinder head that's gonna make flow 250 CFM. And that's very doable. And there's not often that guys come in the door here and hand me heads at flow 250. They always have something that's upper end that floats so much more. And that makes a combination a little more temperamental. It still runs good. Uh, might even make higher horsepower on a higher end, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, create the overall power range the way it should be. So anyhow. Um, so now we know that we got a cylinder head and we went in and we picked out a cylinder head. We found one that flows 250 on the intake or about 250, 260, 270, something like that. That's fine. Just, you know, just, you just don't want to go 350 or 400. Um, so you, you, uh, 
you, you look that head up and you find flow specs on it and you find at what lift does this head flow uh, a decent amount of air. So when it's flowing 250, let's just say for sake of argument at, at 550 lift that uh, when they were when they were uh, flow testing the cylinder head, that's when it that's when it broke the 250 range. So we're going to pick a camshaft out that's that's right around there. We're, you know, maybe not exactly 550. We'll we'll juggle it around a little bit. We could be anywhere, maybe uh, maybe maybe as high as 600, but somewhere right around in there, we're going to be looking for a camshaft. That puts a, that gives us that gives us a, a a good mark to shoot for. We know that we know that 680 is ridiculous. We know that 700 is out of the question. That because we got the flow specs, we we got the flow specs. We see where this head has all of its horsepower potential. Because as the as the uh, cylinder head flows more and more, and you look on the line graph that the, the way the the way the, the 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 head is flowing, when it gets to a certain point, it levels out. And then if the valve lifts even more, it might start falling down. So bigger is not always better. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, you have to start reading graphs. You have to just not take things for granted. Go to professional sites, look up parts, look up part specifications, and start understanding it. Start digesting it. Sooner or later, it'll start to click for you. Okay, so we know how big a head we're going to run. We know how much, we know, we know what cubic inch we're running. We know what its horsepower potential is uh, with a 10 to 1 compression. We found a cylinder head that the combination between the piston that we're going to use and the size of the combustion chamber is going to yield 10 to 1, and this head has an intake flow that will do 250 CFM or maybe a little above, and that cylinder head will, will unlock the, the horsepower that we need. Then we find a camshaft that matches the flow specs on the head. And, and along with, along with uh, not just looking at lift, because there's so much more to camshafts and we can't cover all that now, I'm going to direct you to look into the, towards the company's descriptions to help you pick a camshaft a little bit if you're unfamiliar with yourself. Um, companies like Urson, Competition Cam, Zanotti, a lot, they have really good descriptions in their book. Tells you how it runs, so forth. Tells you what compression ratio you should have. So you're going to be looking for a camshaft and you're going to be going across and you're going down the aisle. And look for a camshaft that likes around your cubic inch. A lot of times it'll tell you a large small block or, you know, or, or uh, I've seen, you see camshafts on big blocks, it'll say 600 plus cubic inch motor. So that's a very good description. They, they know their product. You go through and you look for a camshaft that is around 550 lift range, says for about a 400 inch motor with around 10 to 1 compression. And follow the descriptions. Don't, don't go off the beaten path too much or you're, or you're going to wind up with something that doesn't work right. Trust the data. So, so you, uh, once you pick out your camshaft, your camshaft uh, is also your cam catalog is probably going to tell you the operating range that this uh, RPM wise that this that this camshaft will operate at. And if it tells you that this camshaft is a 6,000 RPM camshaft, don't buy an intake manifold. It's set for 8,500. Uh, and a lot of guys do that. They really, really do. Uh, the, the one fellow I was telling you about, he came in the door with way too big a cam and way too big an intake, and it just, it loses low-end power. I could sit here and talk for hours on that very subject, on, on uh, changing components and how it affects the running of the engine. Maybe someday we'll do that, but the day's not that day. So anyhow, I'm going to go through this, and I know I've been belaboring this. I'll do this one more time. Your engine can only make so much power. And... When it comes to street rod engines, the easiest way, if you're running on pump gas, the easiest way to make a lot of power is to run a big engine. You know, you can't walk into my shop and say, I got a 283 and I want it to run on pump gas and I want it to make 550 horsepower. That doesn't happen. Um, the bigger the engine, the more power, the more torque it's going to make. If it's a street car engine and it's going to run on pump gas, all engines are basically created equal in, in the respect that no matter what engine it is, and there's a couple little variations, but basically all engines can only run but so much compression. So if we have a 283 cubic inch motor that's 10 to 1, it can only make but so much horsepower. It does not, I don't, we haven't even talked, we're not even talking about cam heads or anything else. 283 cubic inch motor with 10 to 1 compression can only make but so much horsepower. Then we use the same scenario with a thousand cubic inch motor. If it's going to run on pump gas and we set it up at 10 to 1, 
it's going to make so much more horsepower than the 283, but it can only unlock so much horsepower. And we're going to use the same exact formulas. We're going to take the cubic inch of our motor, and on a 10 to 1 motor, we're going to times it by one and a quarter. That's what I do on most. And that varies a little bit depending on experience, judgment, different things. But that, that puts you ballpark. And, and more importantly, this is telling you the formula for doing things. And you're going to massage numbers as you learn how to do this. But we'll, we'll go with, uh, we, got, we, got, we, we know how much a cubic inch is. We times it by 1.25 on, on a 10 to 1 motor. We come up with how much horsepower this is going to make. We divide it by the number of cylinders. Now we know how much horsepower per cylinder we need to make. So we take the number that the cylinder makes and we times it by 4 CFM per horsepower. That'll give us our intake flow. Once we know what our intake flow is, we find a camshaft that's going to match the intake flow. And once we have our camshaft and we see what the operating range is, then we can pick an intake manifold. And then it's really good to go to a company uh, when it comes to carburetors and look up look and look at your CFM charts to figure out which carburetor to match to your um, uh, to your the size of your engine and the horsepower potential. And it really is just that simple, guys. Now, there's a lot of experience that goes into this, and um, uh, there are certain. I have had certain engine combinations that make more horsepower than I ever thought they would. Big bore, short stroke engines used to all the time go way faster than I could ever calculate. And uh, so if I said, I, my one friend, my, my buddy Ron, I told everybody his engine's going to run, when we got this Chevelle done, it was going to, a small block was going to run 970s, probably some high 960s. And everybody like, yeah, yeah. That car came out in his first pass and ran 930. Uh, blew me away. Big bore, short stroke. Um, but you learn those things as you go along. When I'm building that type of engine, I use a little bit higher number for my horsepower, uh, for my you know, for my ratio. Instead of 1.25, I might use 1.35. Um, but what I'm telling you will put your ballpark on all this stuff. If you're if you're building if you're building a nine to one motor, if you're building a nine nine and a half to one motor, one horsepower per cubic inch. If you're building an eight eight and a half to one motor, you might want to be doing three and a quarter horsepower per cubic inch, or th three quarter horsepower per cubic inch. Um, but, you know, basically if you're doing that, it's a stock motor and you don't need air help, you just put it back together with a stock kit. But it, it makes my point. Um, along with knowing how much your horsepower is, you can take something as simple as like, it's about a $20 Moroso slide roll. That'll say that if you make 300 horsepower and you have a 3,000 pound car, it'll run low 12s. And you know what? A lot of a lot of a lot of guys are like, no, it won't. Yeah, it will. It absolutely will. That that slide rule is accurate, um, along with the horsepower potential. And, and of course, you you got to have a car that works right, and you have to know how to drive it. Um, you know, three hundred horsepower doesn't sound sexy, and it don't sell it don't sell magazines, and people people don't want to hear about a three hundred horsepower motor. But when you start doing the day, they start doing the math, you learn the data, you really start seeing that this is a lot different than what most people think. You don't need eight hundred horsepower on the street to go fast. 12 second car on the street that's pretty fast um yeah it's not it's not lightning fast but it's pretty fast it's fun to drive 300 horsepower will make a 3,000 pound car run low 12s 575 horsepower will make a 3,000 pound car run high nines high nines low tens um that's faster than what most people think and i just tell you that because i try to get horsepower into a different perspective for people most people have these inflated ideas as to how they want to design their engine based off of all the hype that you see on all the shows, media, and so forth I've already talked about. And uh, a lot of it just wastes your money. So anyhow, guys, um, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the gist of it. Uh, like I said, um, I, can't, I can't help you guys with every one of your combinations. I can't. This is going to open up so many questions. I just can't do them all. So if you ask me a bunch of questions and I don't answer you back, just understand, I just, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, little, little, it's a, you know, this, is, this is a big subject, and every person who calls me up to talk about this turns it into a very, very, very long conversation. Let me ask you a question, okay? And then it leads to another, another, another. That's why this has become a paid service for me. But anyhow, guys, um, I hope that helps. 
Um, none of my engines happen by accident. Uh, if you throw any conglomerate of mix match parts together and put them together to where it don't blow up, it's probably going to run faster. It's not going to run like my motor. It's not going to run like your engine builders either. So anyhow, uh, thanks for watching. We'll be back soon.